Hi, my name is Leslie from Berry Birdie, and today I'm going to share with you how to sew on your binding fast and easy with some pretty decorative stitches. So here is my quilted project that I'm going to put the binding on, and this is my binding piece. Now, this is an inch and a half wide. I do prefer to use a narrower binding when I'm doing my binding this way. If you think it's a little bit too narrow for you, that's totally fine. I just feel like there's always too much bulk when it comes to binding and I like it to be thin and um, not, not overpowering the project. So first you wanna flip over and start from the back. And I do like to sew it starting on the bottom or on just the bottom side, just before the corner, but it's entirely up to you where you would like to start. And I do use matching thread just to hide any of my stitches. Just line it up along the edge and sew it on with a one quarter inch seam. Now when you come to the corner, you want to stop a quarter of an inch from the corner and lift up your presser foot, fold up your fabric to a 45 degree angle and usually I just kind of press it gently with my fingers so that this lines up with the rest of your seam here on the side. Then fold it down and then just continue to sew. I also try not to pull my binding piece too much when I'm sewing so that it doesn't stretch on the edge. I like it to just kind of lay flat and just let it go into the sewing machine. Okay, so now when I come to the end, I just fold back this piece and then I just lay the binding right on top of it and then just stitch over it. And you only need to stitch over it maybe about a centimeter, just half an inch or so. And then just trim off the excess binding. Okay, so now we're ready to turn it to the front. And I do this on my iron. I press it down and then fold it over. So I'm gonna go and do that right now and show you. So we're gonna just press it from the back first. And I just start along the main seams. I don't worry about the corners quite yet. So just press it away from the project, from the quilt, all the way around. And this is actually one of the most important steps because it really keeps this edge on the back nice and straight. And I do this actually on all my quilts, even my full size quilts and my micro minis, my very, very tiny quilts. I do it on them as well. Okay, so once those are done, then I actually don't worry about the corners. I flip them over like so, just turn them over and then I turn it to the front. Now, then I pull it away from the quilt quite tightly, and then I lay it down flat. And you do want to create your 45 degree angles now, so just press them really well. And just go all the way around. So you want to create your corner, so fold it down so it creates that 45 degree angle. And just continue to kind of pull it away make sure it's there's no buckling or gathering at the back or extra fabric you want it all pulled to the front
Now we're ready for our fun decorative stitch around the edge. So you've got this press nice and flat and all you do is just tuck it under. So line it up with the edge of the quilt and then just fold it down. And if you like, you can pin it to hold it down or you can use quilt clips, but usually I just fold it down and just go nice and slow. So just make sure it's tucked under really well. And I've got a back and forth stitch. So I'm just gonna show that to you here. And you just do it right on the edge of your binding. I do like to go nice and slow because when it stitches straight, I don't want it to go off onto the binding or into the quilt. So I just make sure it stays right along that seam. Or I guess the edge of the binding, sorry. is pulled nice and snug and just keep on sewing. Now when you do get to the corner you're going to want to tuck under your next edge piece of binding just to create that 45 degree angle here at the corner. So just fold it under. Just really make sure that this is laying nice and flat. And get a nice sharp corner so that it lines up with the other binding corner. So the binding edge, you want it to line up that point exactly with the other binding edge or at least as close as you can. Now you can also use a blanket stitch or even a zigzag stitch if you don't have a super fancy machine with lots of options for your stitches and it'll work the same way. Just do a zigzag stitch around or if you just want to do a straight stitch, the reason I do it from the back to the front is so that I can see what I'm doing in the on the front. So if I did it the opposite way where the binding was already on on the front and then folded to the back then I wouldn't really be able to see where it was stitching on the front. And that can leave a really big, strange piece of binding on the back too. So that's why I like to do it this way. The one and a half inch binding is actually almost a little bit too wide. So even a one and a quarter inch would have worked as well.
All right, so there we have our decorative binding and then also on the back.